Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Carrier Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing important current affairs for 21st and 22nd of April. The session will be quite interesting. So do pay attention till the end. Let's start. First is DPE. It granted a Navratna status to which organization, right? So recently DPE, that is Department of Public Enterprise that comes under the Ministry of Finance. They have recently granted the Navratna status to NFL. What is NFL? National Fertilizers Limited. Take a note of this. Right? To NFL, this status was granted. Then Airport Authority of India and BEML. They have your mini Ratna status. And NTPC. NTPC has your Nav Ratna status. Correct? Oh, sorry. Maharatna status. NTPC has Maharatna status. And apart from NTPC, you will be seeing ONGC, then Steel Authority of India Limited, Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited, IOCL, Coal India Limited, they are all having the Maharatna status. Then if we talk about Mini Ratna companies, as we just saw, Airport India of India, Lim Airport Authority of India Limited, BEML, then comes your Bharat Dynamics Limited, correct? Then Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited, that is BSNL. Correct. Antrix Corporation Limited. They all have your mini Ratna status. Right. Then if we talk about NFL, National Fertilizers Limited, who is the chairman and managing director here? U Saravanan. Headquarters in Noida, UP. And it was established in 
August in 1974. Correct. And they, this was the upgradation of NFL from Mini Ratna category 1 to Navratna status. Right. So NFL they have been granted and uh, Navratna status recently. Correct. Apart from this. NFL, they have an authorized capital of 1000 crore rupees and paid up capital of around 490.58 crore rupees. Center government holds 74.71% share of the total paid up capital and financial institution has around 25.29% share. Then what are the criteria for the grant of Navratna status to CPSC? The CPSCs which are Mini Ratna, one, Schedule A have a, obtained excellent or very good MOU ratings in about three of the last five years. Then CPSC which have composite score of 60 or above for out of 10. That means more than 60 of above 100 out of 100. In the following six selected performance indicators are eligible to be considered for the grant of Narvatana status. What are the criteria for Maharatna status? It should be listed on Indian Stock Exchange with a minimum prescribed public shareholding under SEBI regulation. The company should possess Navratna status. The CPSC should have annual net worth of 10,000 crore rupees or 3 years or above average of annual turnover of 20,000 crore. Then what is the criteria for Maharatna status to CPSCs? This mini Ratna category 1 status here. The CPSCs which have made a profit consequently for 3 years pre-tax profit of 30 crore rupees or more in the at least one of three years and have positive net worth are eligible to be considered for the grant of mini ratna one status then for mini ratna category two status the cpscs which have made profit consequently for three years and have a positive net worth are eligible to be considered for the grant of mini ratna two status Next is CAG that is Comptroller and Auditor General of India signed a memorandum of understanding with which audit institution to enhance the audit expertise. So first of all tell me who is the CAG of India? Mr. Girish Chandra Murmu. Right. He is the current CAG of India and also remember he has been re-elected as the external auditor for WHO for the term 2024 till 2027. Coming back to the question, CAG, they signed an MOU. It was with which audit institution to enhance audit expertise? It is Bulgarian National Audit Office. So option one is right here. Correct. Then remember, this key agreement was between Supreme Audit Institution of India and Bulgarian National Audit Office. So Supreme Audit Institution of India, they signed basically. Along with this, they will be enhancing and working towards to enhance the auditing expertise both between India and Bulgaria right take a note of this important question apart from this remember this platform will be established for the exchange of knowledge and expertise among the auditing professionals that are between both these countries and they will be collaborating on various training programs correct so that they can conduct audit in a better and refined format. This, sen this signing of this MOU marks a major milestone that will help in enhancing the ties between SAI that is your Supreme Audit Institution of India and Bulgaria's National Audit Office. Right. If we talk about Bulgaria, who is the president of Bulgaria? Rumen Rodev. And what is the capital? Sofia is the capital of Bulgaria. Right. Then this French Court of Audit, it is of France. General Accountability Office, this is of United States of America. And Belgian Court of Audit, right? Remember this, this is of Belgium. Moving on. Here you can see CAG of India, Girish Chandra Murmu sir of India and Bulgarian National Audit Office signed this MOU to enhance the audit expertise. Next question, important question asked to you is what was the age limit that has been eliminated by IRDAI for health insurance purchase? So tell me recently IRDAI that is Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. This is the statutory body of insurance companies, right? And they recently celebrated their silver jubilee. That is the 25 years of celebration. It was when on 19th of April, right? 
and remember irdi was formed as a statutory body under the irdi act of 1999 correct then remember during this irdi they have removed or eliminated the age limit on health insurance purchases right earlier this age used to be what so earlier it was the 65 right take a note of this it was 65 prior to this individuals aged above 65 years were restricted from purchasing new insurance policies correct and now under this new guidelines this age limit has been eliminated by irdi this was on the silver jubilee celebration that was on 19th of april and silver jubilee is to commemorate 25 years of formation correct take a note of this important question friends definitely this age limit can be asked to you is that what was the age limit that was eliminated by irdai so it is 65 of age that has been eliminated further if we talk about the history of irdi in 1993 government of india formed a committee under the chairmanship of r n malhotra who was the former governor of rbi and it is to propose the recommendations to reform the insurance sector and bring change in the insurance sector so that it can also prosper following the recommendations of malhotra committee report irdi was constituted at a, as an autonomous body to regulate and develop the insurance industry in 1999 right then if we talk about irdi the aim is or basically the government of india's aim is to provide insurance for all by 2047 and this is in line with insurance for all by 2047 irdi launched bima trinity this is all in one insurance product that covers your health life property and accident risk irdi has set to deploy bima vahaks this in every gram panchayat across india by 31st of December 2024 to expand insurance penetration in rural areas this bima vahaks is basically to make sure or to guide people to provide them information to create awareness that why insurances are important and why individuals should opt for in insurances we know that in urban areas the insurance penetration is very high still in rural areas this needs to be taken care of and that is the reason in rural areas to enhance the penetration of insurance in the rural areas this bima vahaks will be launched so coming back remember irdi on their silver jubilee celebration that was on 19th of april they made an announcement and stated that all the individuals can now purchase health insurance even after 65 years of age that was earlier that after 65 people cannot buy health insurance that has been now eliminated moving on next nbbl they partnered with which bank to introduce ncmc recharge on bharat bill payment tell me nbbl that is npci national payment corporation of india bill uh, bharat bill pay limited correct nbbl this is a wholly owned subsidiary of npci and they partnered with which bank correct to launch this ncmc that is national Mo common mobility card on their bharat bill pay platform for the convenience of the travelers so it is sbi state bank of india correct so it is state bank of india or we can say nbbl they partnered with which bank it is sbi correct and this introduction of this ncmc card national common mobility card right this introduction will help the customers to recharge or top up their cards online here customers can top up their ncmc cards with up to 10000 rupees online through bharat bill pay enabled platforms this will be supporting various platforms such or various payment methods such as prepaid card debit card upis etc correct mark this take is take this important apart from this remember sbi they have also launched ncmc prepaid card prepaid card in september 2023 and it was basically to enhance the digital ticketing for metros buses water ferries parkings and so on apart from this if we talk about axis bank axis bank in the month of jan 24 they have won the earth care award they won the earth care award 24 and this award for their community based climate action work also remember in october 2023 axis bank they have launched a 
फर्स्ट नंबरलेस क्रेडिट कार्ड फर्स्ट नंबरलेस क्रेडिट कार्ड वॉज लॉन्च बाय एक्सिस बैंक टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस बोथ आर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यू शुड नो अबाउट दैट देन फॉर एच डी एफ सी बैंक रिमेंबर दे बिकेम द फर्स्ट प्राइवेट बैंक दैट हैज ओपन देयर ब्रांच इन लक्ष्य द्वीप आईलैंड राइट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस राइट दे बिकेम द फर्स्ट प्राइवेट बैंक टू ओपन द ब्रांच इन लक्ष्य द्वीप करेक्ट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस देन इफ यू फर्दर टॉक अबाउट येस बैंक येस बैंक दे हैव पार्टनर्ड और दे कोलेबरेटेड विद इंडियन ओलंपिक एसोसिएशन राइट एंड दे हैव लॉन्च अ कैंपेन फॉर द पेरिस ओलंपिक्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर दैट इज मिलकर जिताएंगे कैंपेन मिलकर जिताएंगे कैंपेन करेक्ट सो इट वॉज येस बैंक दे पार्टनर्ड विद इंडियन ओलंपिक एसोसिएशन इट वॉज फॉर पेरिस ओलंपिक्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एंड दे हैव लॉन्च दिस मिलकर जिताएंगे कैंपेन करेक्ट सो ऑल दीज दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट सो डू टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस डेफिनेटली अ क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दिस कैन बी आस्ड इन योर एग्जाम मूविंग ऑन here you can see nbbl that is npci bharat bill payment limited that is a wholly owned subsidiary of npci in association with sbi bank they have launched sbi national common mobility card on bharat bill pay platform for convenience of travelers moving on next is agen life insurance has been renamed as bandhan life by bfhl that is bandhan financial holding limited right that is the promoter of bandhan bank has renamed agen life insurance as bandhan life directly remember this right and the new logo that is a growing bud and tagline bharat ki udan bandhan se has also been unveiled moving on next question which fintech unicorn recently received a principal approval from rbi for the payment aggregator license what is a fintech fintech is a finance and technology right this together known as fintech and unicorn is when a startup has gained a market cap of more than 1 billion dollar that is a unicorn right so recently which fintech unicorn recently received principal approval from rbi for the payment aggregator license it is cred this is a bengaluru karnataka based fintech unicorn they received in principal approval from rbi for the payment aggregator license and remember this usually takes 6 months after the in principal approval for the company to get the final approval from the rbi and this payment aggregator provides secure online payment for the merchants apart from this amazon pay just pay technologies dekfin tech private limited zoho payment technologies remit they have also received the final payment aggregator license and if we talk about phone pay they partnered with phone pay that is the payment organization in nepal right and it was to basically enhance the usage of upi in nepal right even phone pay they partnered with e seva and hotels association of nepal to enhance upi there right this is important and high chance of question being asked here moving on here you can see cred this received the that is bengaluru karnataka based fintech unicorn received in principal approval from rbi for payment aggregator license text renew partnered with which organization to jointly evaluate green ammonia projects in odisha state tell me renew right they have partnered with which organization and remember this renew correct and they have partnered with jera right this is japan's largest power generation company this is japan's largest power generation company right and renew they partnered with jera correct and this mou was for the green ammonia projects in the state of odisha now this location also becomes important question can be asked about the state that renew and jera they have jointly signed with or they have jointly signed together an agreement to evaluate various green ammonia projects in which state of india so it will be in the state of odisha and remember this is in line with india's national green hydrogen mission and japan's clean energy transition goal 
we talk about india's aim india's aim is to produce 5 million tons of green hydrogen per year by 2030 right and we know why green hydrogen because green hydrogen is a clean fuel and on its burning it does not release any carbon residue but it release water vapors instead right that does not cause any pollution apart from this remember ihi corporation right this is also of japan right and india's acme and japan's ihi corporation they signed a pact to supply green ammonia from india to japan so from india to japan to supply this green ammonia acme partnered with japan's ihi corporation right take a note of this apart from this remember if we talk about ifco and acme ifco and acme they together sign an mou that is memorandum of understanding and it is to boost the sustainability in the agriculture sector so these two organization will be working together and they signed a memorandum of understanding so that we can enhance the sustainability in the agriculture sector correct take a note of this so for green ammonia projects it will be in odisha for this jaira and renew partner then to supply green ammonia from japan india to japan it was acme and ihi corporation of japan they signed this mou correct take a note of this and here remember under this project under this green ammonia projects in odisha it is expected that the project will be generating or project will be utilizing 500 megawatt of high capacity renewable energy to produce green hydrogen and the project aims to produce approximately 1 lakh tons the aim is to produce approximately 1 lakh tons of green ammonia annually by 2030 right by 2030 the aim is to produce 1 lakh ammonia correct then if we talk about renew company who is the chairman and managing director here sumanth sinha where is the headquarter it is in gurugram haryana and when was it established it was in 2000, 2011 then in gurugram haryana also remember headquarter of international solar alliance is there right it was started in 2015 bit by india and france jointly moving on here you can see renew through this subsidiary renew e fuels private limited and jaira they will jointly evaluate green ammonia production projects in paradeep in odisha and the project will utilize 500 megawatt of high capacity renewable energy to to produce green hydrogen and the project aims to produce approximately 1 lakh tons of green ammonia by 2030 next next is irda they have set up a new office in jif city to promote renewable energy projects in the foreign countries i repeat in order to or basically question can be asked that which organization set up a new office in jif city in gandhinagar gujarat in order to promote renewable energy projects in various foreign countries and also to fund them it is irda correct this will also finance i repeat this will also finance the right that means to help those project in financing for setting up these green hydrogen projects or various renewable energy projects in different countries also the initiative will play a critical role of in the national green hydrogen mission of india right and the aim of which is we just saw to produce 5 million metric tons of hydrogen but green hydrogen by 2030 if we talk about irda who is the chairman and managing director here pradeep kumar das where is the headquarter it is in new delhi when was it established in 1987 this was established correct moving on who has been appointed as the new 26th chief of naval staff so tell me who has been appointed as the new 26th chief of naval staff he will be vice admiral dinesh kumar tripathi right vice admiral dinesh kumar tripathi has been appointed as the 26th chief of naval staff take a note of this important right and who is the 25th 
चीफ ऑफ नेवल स्टाफ ही विल बी आर हरी कुमार ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ चीफ ऑफ नेवल स्टाफ देन हेयर ओनली इफ वी सी हु इज द करंट चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ सो हु इज द करंट चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ जनरल मनोज पांडे ही इज द करंट चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ सी ए एस देन हु इज द करंट एंड सेकेंड चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ सी डी एस राइट ही वॉज अपॉइंटेड आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ जनरल बिपिन रावत लेट जनरल बिपिन रावत हु वॉज द फर्स्ट चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ सो अनिल चौहान इज द करंट एंड द सेकेंड चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ सो इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू रिमेंबर हु हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड एज द न्यू चीफ ऑफ नेवल स्टाफ दिनेश कुमार त्रिपाठी जी राइट एडमिरल हु इज बिन अपॉइंटेड हेयर रिमेंबर एडमिरल दिनेश कुमार त्रिपाठी वाइस एडमिरल दिनेश Kumar Tripathi has been appointed as the 26th Chief of Naval Staff. This question can be also asked in such a way that he will be succeeding whom? So he will be succeeding the 25th Chief of Naval Staff, that is Radha Krishna Hari Kumar, right? Then if we talk about Dinesh Kumar Tripathi ji, Vice Admiral Dinesh Kumar Tripathi appointed as the 26th Chief of Naval Staff of the Indian Navy, and he is currently serving as the Vice Chief of the Naval Staff. Then he will take charge from Admiral. R Hari Kumar the present chief of naval staff who is to set retire on 30th of April apart from this vice admiral Dinesh Kumar Tripathi was born in May 1964 he joined the executive branch of Indian Navy on 1st of July 1985 then he was a communication and electronic war specialist he had a long distinguished career in Indian Navy spanning over almost four decades then he has served as the fleet operation officer of the western fleet director of national operation and principal director network center operations principal director and naval plan in new delhi correct then apart from this if we talk about some of the awards he was honored with ati vishesh seva medal and no sena medal for his contribution to indian navy then during his time at defense service staff college in wellington tamil nadu he was bestowed with thimiya medal then while pursuing the naval high command course at naval command at usa war college from 2007 to 8 he was awarded with the prestigious robert e batman national prize international prize correct to take a note of this moving on next is who has been appointed as the director general of nsg so tell me who has been appointed as the director general of nsg what is nsg first of all tell me nsg stands for your national security guard right so recently acc appointments committee of the cabinet appointed nalin prabhat right he appointed nalin prabhat as the director general of national security guard correct take a note of this highly important the next question can be asked is nalin prabhat will be succeeding whom he will be succeeding Daljeet Singh Chaudhary right Daljeet Singh Chaudhary apart from this here remember if i ask you who has been appointed as the special director in ib so who has been appointed as the special director in ib sapna tiwari has been appointed as the special director in ib correct take a note of this and she has been appointed on an in situ basis by temporarily upgrading the post of additional director apart from this if i ask you acc appointed whom as the director general of national investigating agency n national investigation agency that is nia correct nia stands for national investigation agency so who has been appointed as the Director General of National Investigation Agency Sadanand Vasant has been appointed as the Director General of NIA. Take a note of this important, right? The highly important question. So here you can see ACC approves the appointment of Nalin Prabhat as Director General of NSG and Sapna Tiwari as the Special Director of IB. next here you can see nalin prabhat appointed as director general of nsg he is a 1992 batch ips officer of andhra pradesh cadder and he is currently serving as the additional director general in crpf in jammu and kashmir and if we talk about sapna tiwari 
appointed as special director in ib she is a 1992 batch ips officer of odisha cadre and she is currently serving as the additional director general of the ib next is rbi approved the appointment of whom as md and ceo of dhan lakshmi bank so rbi has approved the appointment of ajit kumar kk i repeat option 1 ajit kumar kk as the managing director and chief executive officer of dhan lakshmi bank take it important next next question can be asked is he will be succeeding whom he will be succeeding jk shivan right whose term is scheduled to was scheduled to be end on 29th of jan 2024 that means it's jk shivan jk shivan's tenure ended on 29th of january and now ajit kumar kk has been appointed as the md and ceo of dhan lakshmi bank right take a note of this then if we talk about ravindran right rbi approved the appointment of ex sebi's executive director ravindran as tmb that is tamil nadu mercantile bank's part time chairman part time chairman right take a note of this then alok rungta remember alok rungta has been appointed as the managing director and chief executive officer of future generally india life insurance future generally life india life insurance right take a note of this then if we talk about mv rao central bank of india central bank of india ceo mv rao has been designated as the chairman of the iba that is indian banks association right and coming back rbi appointed ajit kumar kk as md and ceo of dhan lakshmi bank and he will be succeeding jk shivan right he will be succeeding whom he will be succeeding jk shivan important right moving on if we talk about ajit kumar kk right you can see he served as the season banker for over 36 years with an experience with federal bank limited that includes your credit card business human resource branch banking and so on right moving on if we talk about dhan lakshmi bank where is the headquarter of dhan lakshmi bank it is in thissur kerala and when was this it established in 1927 this was established moving on kk m mystery took charge as the new chairman of so kk m mystery took charge as the chairman of hdfc life insurance right option 1 is right here then if we talk about tata aia life insurance who has been appointed here as the md and ceo so venkata chalam h venkata chalam h has been appointed here as the md and ceo of tata aia life insurance then if we talk about lic mutual fund remember lic mutual fund has appointed ravi kumar jha has appointed ravi kumar jha as the managing director and chief executive officer of lic mutual fund and remember kk m mystery will took charge take charge as the new chairman of hdfc life and he will succeed whom he will be succeeding whom so remember he will be succeeding here deepak parekh correct he will be succeeding whom here he will be succeeding deepak parekh correct who was the chairman and non executive director of hdfc life then remember kkm mystery he was appointed as the managing director of hdfc limited housing development finance corporation limited in year 2000 then he re was resigned redesignated as the vice chairman and managing director in 2007 right and vice chairman and chief executive officer of the corporation in 2010 correct take a note of this i repeat kkm mystery he was he joined hdfc in 1981 then he was appointed as the managing director of hdfc that is housing development finance corporation limited and he was appointed as md in the year 2000 then he was redesignated as the vice chairman and md in 2007 and he became vice chairman and ceo of the corporation in 2010 right and deepak parekh he will be succeeding deepak parekh to be the new chairman of hdfc life insurance here you can see kkm mystery moving on 
Here you can see the appointment follows the resignation of Deepak Parekh as the chairman and non-executive director of HDFC Life. And in 2006, Deepak S. Parekh was honored with Padma Bhushan for the category of trade and industry. Then if we talk about HDFC Life Insurance Company, who is the managing director and chief executive officer here? Ms. Vibha Padalkar, headquarters is in Mumbai, Maharashtra, established in the year 2000. Next, India delivered the first batch of BrahMos supersonic cruise missile to which country? And this is one of the most important question, friends. We have been discussing these questions since this agreement was signed. So remember, India delivered and recently it has delivered the first batch of the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile and it delivered to Philippines. The contract for this was signed in January 2022. The contract was worth $375 million, right? And the deal was made during the first export customer or we can say India delivered this BrahMos supersonic cruise missile to Philippines and Philippines became the first customer of these BrahMos missile. And this was under their Horizon 2, right? Horizon 2, this is the revised armed force modernization program of Philippines. Then if we talk about Guyana, Guyana, they procured two aircraft for their military surveillance from india can you name these two aircrafts what were they named they were named dornier 228 aircraft correct and these dornier 22 aircraft were procured by guyana defense for for surveillance then if we talk about vietnam remember recently indian navy they have gifted a warship what is the name of that warship to vietnam it is ins kirpan ins kirpan was gifted by Indian Navy to the Vietnam, right? Take a note of this. And in Paris, France, remember, Olympic Games will be held, correct? If we talk about BrahMos supersonic cruise missile, it works at 2.8 Mach. The speed here is 2.8 Mach. 1 Mach is equal to the speed of sound. It has a range of 290 kilometers. It has been now extended, the ex BrahMos extended range, it has 450 kilometers. And the target here is to further extend it to 600 kilometers. Then from India to Philippines, these BrahMos cruise missiles were delivered using the C-17 Glowmaster transport aircraft, right? Next, here you can see India delivered the first batch of BrahMos supersonic cruise missiles to Philippines. The question is important. Take a note of this high chance of being asked, right? And apart from this, friends, this BrahMos, BrahMos, this is a joint venture that is between India and Russia, right? And this joint venture was signed in 1998 and it was for 25 years. Moving on, here you can see BrahMos supersonic cruise missile is produced by BrahMos Aerospace Private Limited, a joint venture between DRDO and Russia's Federation NPO. The deal made Philippines first export customer for the BrahMos missile as a part of their Horizon 2 revised armed force modernization program. Next, here you can see DRDO handed over this indigenous flight control system for Hall's LCA Tejas Mark 1A. I repeat, ADA, that is Aeronautical Development Agency of DRDO, they handed over the first batch of indigenous leading edge sled acutators and air brake control module to Hindustan Aeronautics Limited for using it in the light combat aircraft Tejas Mark 1A fighter aircraft. Right? Next. When do we observe UN Chinese Language Day? So when do we observe UN Chinese Language Day? Tell me. So UN Chinese Language Day is observed when? This is an important question. Tell me. What is the date? It is on 20th of April. We observe UN Chinese Language Day. Right? Take a note of this. And why do we observe this on 20th of April only? Because on 20th of April was selected. Here you can see. The date 20 April was selected from Guyu, that is the reign of millet, which is the sixth of the 24 solar terms in the traditional East Asian calendar. And it is to pay tribute to Kenji. In the Gregorian calendar, it usually begins around 20th of April. And Kenji is an ancient figure and ancestor of the Chinese characters. He was claimed to be an official historian of the Yellow Emperor and credited with inventing Chinese charters, uh, Chinese characters. Correct. Then further, 
यू एन चाइनीज लैंग्वेज डे ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ ऑफ अप्रैल बट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ अप्रैल वॉट डू वी ऑब्जर्व ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ अप्रैल इट इज योर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज डे एंड इट इज ऑल द बर्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ विलियम शेक्सपियर दैट इज ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ अप्रैल वी ऑब्जर्व इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज डे देन एटीन ऑफ दिसंबर इज ऑब्जर्व एज योर अरेबिक लैंग्वेज डे राइट इट मार्क्स द एनिवर्सरी ऑन द डे ऑन विच Arabic was proclaimed as one of the UN's official language. Twentieth of March as your French language day, as your French language day, and it marks the anniversary of the creation of Agency for Cultural and Technological Cooperation, that is ACCT. So twentieth of March as your French language day, eighteenth as your Arabic language day, twenty third as your English language day, and twentieth of April as your UN Chinese language. Day here you can see all these days. Russian language day on sixth of June, Spanish language day on twenty third of April, and French language day on eighteenth of or twentieth of March. Arabic language day eighteen December, and English language day twenty third of April. So friends, these were your important current affairs for the day. Now let's move to some one liner revision. These one liner points are considered to be one of the most important segment of our video. So let's start. DPE granted Navratna status to National Fertilizers Limited. CAG of India and Bulgarian National Audit Office signed MOU to enhance audit expertise. IRDI celebrated Silver Jubilee on 19th of April 2024. NBBL and SBI they have introduced NCMC recharge on Bharat Bill Pay. Agen Life Insurance renamed as the Bandhan Life by BFHL. Credit they have received in principle approval from RBI for payment aggregator license. Renew and JERA they have partnered to jointly evaluate green ammonia projects in Odisha. IRDA they have set up a new office in Jif city to promote renewable energy projects in foreign currency and also to finance those projects then vice admiral dinesh kumar tripathi has been appointed as the 26th chief of naval staff acc has approved the appointment of nalin prabhat as the director general of energy and sapna tiwari as special director of ib rbi has approved the uh, rbi has approved the appointment of Ajit Kumar KK as managing director and chief executive officer of Dhan Lakshmi Bank. KK M Mistry took charge as the new chairman of HDFC Life Insurance. India has delivered first batch of BrahMos supersonic cruise missile to Philippines. DRDO handed over indigenous flight control system for Hall's light combat aircraft Tejas MK1 that is Mark 1 and UN Chinese Language Day on 20th of April. so these are your important questions for the day and important current affairs for the day friends do like the video if you find the session important and also comment below and let us know what are your views for the same doing this will motivate me to make better content for you in the long run now let's move to some revision part that will be beneficial for your learning in feb mir mohammad farooq nazki a prominent broadcaster poet and sahitya academy awardee passed away in which year did he win sahitya academy award in kashmiri language for his poetry book that is nar hatun kazal vanas that is the fire in the eyelashes so in which year did he win sahitya academy award so it was in the year 1995 correct mir mohammad farooqi nazgi a prominent broadcaster poet and sahitya academy award winner passed away at the age of 83 in the katra in the union territory in the union territory of jammu and kashmir and in 1995 he was honored with sahitya academy award in kashmiri language for his poetry next which country's former president sebastian pinare recently passed away in feb 2024 so which country's former president chile's former president recently passed away next in feb british indian peer dash passed away so in feb Shreela Flather Shreela Flather British Indian peer recently passed away correct and remember if we talk about her she was the first british asian woman to become a life peer in 1990 and she was the first british asian woman to become the mayor in the uk next padma shri awardee and renowned hindi and maithili writer usha krish usha kiran khan passed away in feb 2024 in which year did she receive padma shri award in the field of literature and education so in the year 2015 she received padma shri award in the field of literature and education correct take a note of this who we are talking about we are talking about 
रिनोन्ड हिंदी एंड मैथिली राइटर उषा किरण खान हु रिसेंटली पास अवे नेक्स्ट द रिनोन्ड स्पेशलिस्ट इन जेनेटिक मेडिसिन एंड पद्माश्री अवार्डी ईश्वर चंद्र वर्मा पास अवे इन विच ईयर ईश्वर चंद्र वर्मा वॉज कन्फर्ड विद पद्माश्री अवार्ड इन द फील्ड ऑफ मेडिसिन सो ही वॉज ऑनर्ड विद पद्माश्री अवार्ड इन द फील्ड ऑफ मेडिसिन इन विच ईयर इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस इन विच ईयर इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री राइट नेक्स्ट इज योर होमवर्क सेक्शन फर्स्ट द ग्रंथा स्क्रिप्ट वंस यूज टू राइट संस्कृत वॉज मेनली फ्रॉम विच इंडियन स्टेट सेकेंड When is the National Voters Day observed every year? Third, what is the IUCN status of wandering albatrosses recently seen in the news? Next, fourth, disease X recently seen in news is related to which one of the following? And fifth, what is the name of the first large language model recently introduced by Corova.ai in India? so these are your five homework question friends and i need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773362 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official also students you can use code vikas10 that will give you extra 10% discount on the courses that you will purchase